HD. I know my my camera does the same. Wow. I thought she had a camera in the back. I would like actually to cue uh, Assemblyman Farrell to come up because I understand he has a busy night and he drove all the way down from Albany for this. So Denny, we're going to give you a chance to address the club. Um, thank you, Assemblyman Farrell, and we're asking folks to speak for about five minutes. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much, Mark. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. Uh, let's see. I was in Albany about two and a half hours ago. If you figure that out, at 130 miles, it's about 65 miles an hour. And I'm going to have to go back up because we have an early session tomorrow. And I have to be up there. I try not to miss any of my votes. What we did today was pass another extension. We have not been able to finish a budget on time. We're having a lot of battles. And the issue is over the same thing where the cut's going to be. One of the big fights, as you know, earlier in the month was the fight we had with the governor over whether we should close the parks or not. And we were able to finally get them open after working for like 24 hours to force it to happen. Uh, but I'd like to talk a little bit about who I am. I, all of you should know me, I hope. If you don't, you've been living in this district for a long time, I'll be in trouble. But anyway, I'm uh, basically I have worked, I believe, in uh, quality of life. That is the big battle that we have in this location, in this city, and especially in our community. Uh, over the years, I have fought for that. We were originally, the fights 30 years ago was with landlords that wouldn't give heat and did things that were not acceptable. Some of them walked away from buildings. During that time period, I worked very hard taking tenants and going to court, though not a lawyer, working on behalf of the tenants. And when things got really bad, we found out there was a law, and we came up with something new. Sometimes people would call it a major change. We said to landlords, if you don't take care of your buildings, we're going to take them away from you. And at one point in this neighborhood, in the 71st Assembly District, but around 1981-82, we had approximately 75 buildings we took away from landlords. Those buildings are still standing today. Some of them went into city programs and they were turned back to people who owned them. Other ones were turned into co-ops and not the co-op that is worth a million dollars, but a co-op that says you have a house and you have a say in what the temperature in the apartments are going to be and the quality of life in that building. Now, what I've seen change is in the years that we've worked to make sure that those tenants got to stay in their buildings, now they're staying there and if they've been there 35 years, they're like me. They've got to be at least over 21. And a lot of them are having this major problem. Buildings like companies like Pinnacle have now come in, taking the buildings that these folks, by living in them, kept alive. And they're coming in, buying them, fixing up the elevators, putting a flag on the roof, and I'm not against flags, and then turning around and say, this is a co-op, and these apartments are worth a million dollars apiece. Now, when you get a red herring, any of you ever got what they call the red herring? And you're 80 years old, you clutch your chest and almost fall over because it frightens you. And a lot of these people didn't understand and don't understand that you can't kick them out. So what we're doing today is we've been fighting. And as you can see, the uh, control of uh, the um, Attorney General, Mario, uh, Andrew Cuomo, a matter of fact, a couple of weeks ago, won a great victory and it says we can now go in and go after Pinnacle throughout the city. So with that, those are the things that I think that are important, making sure that those buildings that survive will continue to survive as homes for people who can afford it. Because we have this funny situation where we have people moving in as people move out and they come in and they're paying two and three thousand dollars for their apartments and right next to them is someone else who's only paying eight hundred dollars and of course the landlord goes after that person with eight hundred dollars looking for any excuse to try to get them out so we're fighting to make sure that doesn't happen the other problem we have of course is crime in the face of people getting shot drugs have gone down but simultaneously we've also had another problem and it's the quality of life on saturday night or in any time 
the motorcycles, the problems you hear in the parks. So one of the big fights I've been having is working with the police, working with the community to make sure that we don't have the sort of noise that we don't need after 9 o'clock at night, that we try to go after the guys and folks that are running the motorcycles along the back street, making sure that uh, we have parks that close at a proper time. On Riverside Drive, we have a problem sometimes that the parks will be open. They used to be open until 10 o'clock. We've asked them not to do that or close it at 8 o'clock, turn the radios down, and we've been able to do that. It's impossible to tell you my life as a legislator in five minutes because this, I've got 20 other stories to tell you, but I saw that uh, my colleague is walking over here to tell me something. So I'd be glad to answer any questions if anybody wanted to ask me questions. A lot of the good governance groups, and even outside the good mm -hmm. governance groups, see the problems in Albany as structural, mm -hmm. built in, pensions that are not sustainable, the debt is not sustainable. What you take on that, and what's your approach on Which it? editorial you're reading at what time? You know, they all say they want us to have independence and indiv individual people but the minute we start to say we're not going to do this or that, then they say we're boss control and that we're not doing our job. I believe that there is reform that has to be done, but not major. Because what we have, we have a system here and people won't tell you the truth. We have a $135 billion budget. We have an eight or a $9.3 billion deficit. We got that deficit not because of what we did in this state. We lost it and got what the problem we have because the banks did something they were not supposed to do. And if you, if, as we get further away from 2008, it's more and more seeming like we were the fault. Uh-uh. They did things they shouldn't. The market crashed. Because Wall Street crashed, we lost the income that came from them. Now, we have spent a lot of money, and I won't say no, but it has been in education. It's been for senior citizens. There are things that have to be done. So the hole we're in right now, just as we were in a similar hole back in 2001 after the planes flew into the building, what happened then, we had the same thing. We lost the market because Wall Street went down. We were able to reverse that and everything began to do better. And the big important thing is that Robert Jackson from this district fought to increase education for children. We have put those monies in. The fight we're having with the governor right now is he wants to cut a billion four out of education. That will create a major problem. It will increase class size. We will not be able to guarantee that we're going to do the things that we told the government, we, uh, the judges and the courts we would do after the case that Robert Jackson won. So we're fighting him right now. We're saying, let's cut that to $800 million. We can, we can do that. That will not affect the class size. We won't be putting people on the unemployment rolls. We'll be able to do a bit of job, better job. He's fighting us on that one. And we're holding out. We believe that's more important than getting done anything else. So we end up doing things that makes us look like we're overspending. But at the same time, when we give you the services, when your grandchild or child is in a better class and is doing better, then you have to say it, it's worth the money we spend. We're, we're going to take one very quick question because we have to move on. But who, they said that they, that's being moved into being part of the budget. And that would be a great way to raise probably billions of dollars for the state. Do you support that? Uh, the medical marijuana bill? Yes, I do. Uh, and as to whether it will be a lot of money for the state, I don't think so, because we're there. We're not, we, we're not going to make it legal and put it on the tobacco stand, because uh, we got enough trouble with Philip Morris. We don't need them to have competition. And that's my family. All right. Thank you all very much. And I apologize not to be able to stay, but as I said, I've got to get back on the road and go back up to Albany.